Um, a couple of weekends ago we went to um, Stratford upon Avon Racecourse, part of um, Greg Virgo's farewell do. There's plenty of videos on YouTube from people like Greg Virgo, Gadget John, etc. of the actual event. So I, and I didn't film anything of any significance, mainly because I was too busy um, bowing to all these um, YouTubers and having a good time and chatting and looking at some interesting van builds and generally, um, to be completely honest, I completely forgot to actually film anything. Um, Project Am was there, we, we met Lance, his um, bonkers Springer Spaniel, uh, Ash Pollard was there, um, amazing fan. <laughs> he does a very good blog, a very interesting blog of his life during his journeys, which is strangely addictive, I don't know why. <laughs> but we'll be watching him. Um, but we had a good time. But while I was there, my diesel heater packed up. I thought initially um, it was a power management issue. The batteries were a bit flat. It had been grey and overcast all day, uh, all weekend, and we were at the, the last day. The batteries hadn't really had much of a charge um, from the solar. Uh, and the Genesis electronic system in this van will start turning things off. Um, the Genesis and the system that's behind my driver's seat here. We'll start turning stuff off when the batteries get down to about 12.2, 12.3 volts. I turn the heating on, the impact of the glow plug um, caused the battery voltage temporarily to drop down to 12.2 volts. So Helga kindly informed us that she was going into uh, one of the three power saving modes. The diesel heater and the climate control system uh, there's our climate uh, air conditioning unit in the in the van here, and up the top there is the um, Espacia, Espacia, e Eber, Eber, I can't pronounce the bloody word now. Anyway, there's a climate controller up there. Um, everything went off. So the, the heater was in its start-up stage, and it went off, and I couldn't get things to restart again. Um, so I thought, huh. Just a heat, just a, a voltage issue. I was wrong. It just a sheer coincidence. The fan in the heater went open circuit and failed completely. And when I got home, um, I diagnosed that quite promptly. But I've came to the conclusion I don't like this climate control unit. A couple of reasons. Firstly, it's got a minimum temperature of 18 degrees centigrade for the heater. Obviously it's designed as climate control, so you're, you're trying to keep a van um, at a stable temperature when it's operating as an ambulance, sort of 24 hours a day or whatever. So for that purpose it's fine. With one exception, that climate control unit does not seem to modulate the heater properly. And by modulate I mean slow the fan down once the temperature's been reached. If, it's, if it does, then I, maybe it's faulty, but it does not work properly. And we never ever got the, heat, the fan and the heater down to an acceptable noise level. It was always unpleasant. It also had a habit of switching the heater off when temperatures met rather than throttling the fan right back, which is what the expected behaviour of these heaters is. End result was it would be on, off, on, off, on, off all the time, um, trying to maintain the temperature. And each time you start one of these heaters up, you have a glow plug cycle. That draws 10 to 12 amps of current. When it shuts down, the glow plug comes on again to burn off any unburnt diesel as it shuts down. That's not healthy for your batteries, and that's where I think we were having probably a bit of a hit on our batteries. So, when I got home from the event, I decided I would uh, investigate the problem with the heater, just to double check, because I couldn't get the thing to start up. I thought initially it had locked up. And I happened to have in my spares box for the uh, craft run building, this 801 controller. These units have diagnostic functions. So, I temporarily wired in to the heater wiring just so I could run some diags and it told me that the fan was open circuit not spinning properly and a couple of other things and I thought oh, that's interesting cleared the fault codes down again attempted to restart the heater got the same error message and the fan wouldn't even start up so fortunately I'm thinking to myself hope it's not the ECU um, but I took the cover off the fan off the heater and I I think I'll add in now a clip of me measuring the resistance of the fan. Today I've just added this 801 controller, um, spliced it into the existing harness because there's about 20 feet more cable than you actually need. 
I intend to actually leave this AO running controller in once I've wired it in properly, but it has a diagnostic function, unlike the climate control up there, which um, not only has no diagnostics on it, you can't even set the temperature down to anything below 18 degrees, which is too much, because these um, heaters, they don't regulate their temperature well uh, without a without a proper uh, modulating controller and this doesn't appear to be one. But anyway, this 801 controller here, um, that's the current temperature in the in the uh, fan at the moment, has diagnostics. So I logged it into diagnostic mode and it came up with um, error 31, error 32 and error 52, all related to the fan. Um, on my laptop there, blower motor interruption, open circuit, blow motor short circuit. I had both of those. And that's um, uh, a contradiction in terms straight away. So common sense says something's not right. Hope it's not the ECU. Um, really do hope it's not the ECU. So the annoying thing about changing any of the parts on these is you've got to take them out and that's a lot of faffing about underneath the van to disconnect the fuel supply. But I've just pulled the ECU off and I've got a meter connected to the fan itself just to do a resistance check and this is interesting it's just over half an ohm at the moment now watch whoops open circuit if I spin this, if I power the um, heater up and spin this, I can get it to turn, run a bit, but the brushes are packed up. It's, there you go, it's only making contact in one part of the rotation. Now this is really quite, I'll bring this white mark around now on the fan and it should be about there. That's bonkers. This fan is out on my other D4. I actually fitted this because the fan that was originally in this van makes a squeaking noise. This is damn annoying because now I've got to take this all apart again. I serviced this a few weeks ago and fitted this fan on there as almost like preventing the maintenance, thinking it would be better than the one that's on it. But now I've got to pull all this out again, take this fan off. I don't think I can, uh, no, I can't get it out without taking the whole heater out. Ah! Anyway. Once I've changed the fan, I'm going to put the original one back on for the time being. Once I've changed the fan, um, I might be able to see if this thing starts up again. Because it's cold enough now that we need some heating in this fan. But there you go. Classic example of knackered brushes. Typical. I haven't even used it once yet in anger. So at the moment I've put the old, original blower motor back in it. don't know how old it is. It's got 2010 on it. I can't imagine it's the actual original original. It works fine. It's a bit squeaky, although it has actually settled down since I put it back in again. Um, in the shot now is a 701 controller. <coughs> I also plugged this in and tested this. This actually allows you to use it as a timer. Um, I am using this in the other van. I'm going to actually use it by the bed so we can actually set um, times on it for starting the heating up. You can't have two controllers running in parallel um, but you can do them via a switch and this has only got four wires on it um, red being obviously 12 volts that doesn't need to be via switch it can be perfectly powered up and that will keep the clock running in this because it's, it's a seven day timer so it's got a clock in it it has a brown wire it says where's the brown wire brown wire brown wire brown wire that needs to go to the heaters um, controller earth. It's actually a brown and white cable. It's not a good idea putting this brown wire on the chassis earth. Um, it will work, but there is actually a filtered earth that comes directly from the heater. Gets rid of noise, gets rid of um, any issues with um, odd behaviours. So that goes to the earth provided in the heater harness. The yellow wire is the on off effectively. When the timer switches on, that will have, will have 12 volts on it. And the grey and red wire there that's the wire that does the heater modulation. Um, the controller sends a voltage down this wire that tells the heater what temperature to maintain. 
On this particular control, it's not as intelligent as on the 801. The 801 has got two temperature sensors in it. The 801's a very good little controller. It's just a shame it doesn't have a timer. But right there, there's a little protrusion there. Ah, little protrusion there. There's actually two temperature sensors in there. One that it uses internally to display and set the temperature and the other one it actually sends it actually is connected to the grey wire coming from the heater and the heater will then use the information from this sensor which is more relevant to the amb ambient temperature in the room or in the van and it no longer uses the temperature sensor that's actually on the side of the heater because the way these heaters normally work if they are not being regulated and managed externally is it senses the air the temperature of the incoming air and tries to modulate, modulate itself. Now obviously, depending on where the heat is placed, in my case it's in the step, it could be, um, you know, a lot of common places, people put them on, under the seats, zoom out, people put them under the seats, so it could well be that the intake is not in the same part of the, the area you're trying to heat. It's also quite crude because they're, you know, you, measuring cold airflow at a low level isn't accurate. But that's the reference that the heater normally uses to calculate whether it's actually achieving the temperature required. And the thermostat effectively is just an on-off switch um, by default. However, in this 801 controller, they've, they've done it in a clever way. It sends out a voltage. Now, I measured that a few days ago. The voltage it sends out is um, at zero degrees, 2.2 volts. And for every increase in required temperature, it increases the voltage it's sticking out by 10 millivolts. So at 70 degrees, 17 degrees centigrade, I'm in the UK, I work in centigrade, not Fahrenheit, um, the temperature is, uh, sorry, the voltage is 2.37 volts. And the way the heater establishes whether it's hit the required target or not is the voltage from the second sensor, which is on the grey wire of the heater, is also the same voltage. So it knows that if both of those voltages are the same, the temperature has been hit. If there is a difference in those voltages, it can work out whether the temperature is too high and it needs to shut down, or the temperature is too, too low and it needs to ramp up. And, and by that, the heater can modulate the temperature in the room relatively well, and at the same time, it controls the fan speed down to almost a whisper. It's not dead quiet, but it's damned impressive compared to flat, flat out. It will modulate the fan, it will modulate the uh, flow of the fuel through the fuel pump. It's not 100% precise. I think there's a variation in about, having sat here and watched this thing now and measured the voltage, the temperature varies by about two degrees. Um, it waits until the temperature is one degree above the target before it ramps the fan down. It waits for the temperature to be um, to stabilize and drop about one degree below before it begins to ramp up. So there's a variation of about two, degree, two degrees. That's far, far more efficient and effective than if you're relying on the incoming temperature sensor in the heater itself. The variation there is about four degrees. So if you've got your temperature in your room set at 18, which is comfortable, um, that thing's varying between 14, which is chilly, and 22, which is too warm. Um, worst case. That, that's the way I understand it, having read a bit more about this since this thing went wrong. But end result is, I've now got this nice little controller tucked away on my piece of oak here. Um, I've got a heater with a squeaky blur, but it's working fine, which is excellent because we didn't have to have some conversation on that Monday morning because I couldn't put the heat on. It was wet, soggy and horrible. So that's a quick overview of the controllers. Um, I will be using another 801 in the crafter, uh, assuming I'm still using this van and we haven't taken this out of here. And I will be fitting this 701 controller somewhere else in the crafter so that we've got uh, a time control. The unfortunate thing about this 701 is it's got, uh, can you see it, can you see it, can you see it, can you see it, I think you can, it's got a ramp and it just shows uh, a bar display going from left to right based on temperature. You have no idea what that temperature is. You can guess it with using an the external thermostat, a thermometer rather, but you can't really tell what the thing's set to, which is a shame. If this, had a, if this displayed the actual temperature, then as a 
seven day timer it will be brilliant because you can't beat being able to turn your heating on at seven in the morning or whatever half an hour before you get out of bed in my view uh, and that's what this thing does um, whether I actually wire it into this fan or not I don't know um, it's not far to stretch and uh, switch it on I might do I, I could probably put this somewhere temporarily um, but this is really going to go in the crafter and I don't want to start I don't want to use too many things in this van that I bought for the other van otherwise it all starts getting a bit expensive <laughs> Um, so that's that for this particular um, quick, well I say quick, it was intended to be quick, I'll have to do a bit of editing on what I've been waffling on about, but uh, that's a quick overview of a slight mishap with my heating and what I did to actually resolve it. Thanks for watching.